Lumber Tycoon 2, a game that has pioneered the tycoon genre, bringing up concepts of capitalism. Oop. Since the start of its development in 2015 to today, the game has changed overrun, deserted, there's Never too many things. Creativity limits you. This is the full history of- No, it doesn't go like this. Things never turned out right, at least not this time. I am sick of people covering up the truth. The dark side to a limitless game. The side that is keeping the game afloat. This is a complete history of exploitation in Lumber Tycoon 2. Lumber Tycoon contains two distinct types of exploitation, the first being bugs slash glitches that are abused to achieve things otherwise impossible. The more known side of exploitation, however, is through the use of third-party software that injects code into the game. One of the first and most damaging exploits actually surfaced without the use of a third party. Duplication is commonly regarded as the game's first major exploit, and due to the game's physical state, it could be easily abused. In the beginning, duplication glitches were quickly patched, as most of them are relatively easy to perform. Tefatio himself would ban players whose bases contained duplicated items, even asking them for info on how the glitch was performed. This resulted in many people duping in secret, spreading items out among multiple plots and even accounts. Sadly, duplication still remains one of the biggest issues in Lumber Tycoon 2, corrupting and inflating the economy to a point of no return. In early 2016, many third-party softwares were used to insert B-tools in early form game editing and other general Roblox exploits such as Fly and Noclip. According to sources, Defaultio was very invested in patching as many exploits as possible, so many that he quote, couldn't even give a number today. In late 2016, one of the most revolutionary glitches was discovered. That very glitch is welding, the process of connecting one object to another based on the weld parts inside of it. While it's not sure who discovered player to part welding, many popular designs began to surface, such as a side arm truck being used to gather palm wood. Around the same time, it was found that welding the player's legs to a trailer's hitch would allow the player to control the trailer, thus moving it at very fast speeds. These welding glitches were patched numerous times, with workarounds being discovered shortly after. Welding innovations continue into 2017, with things such as side trailers and dozer contraptions used to fling items off a person's base. Part to part welding was also expanded on during this time, notably with doors and a unique ability to open slash close. Code Primate, a very popular YouTuber at the time, popularized this discovery, naming the method Door Bridges. These bridges, once constructed, could skip every toll that the game had. Defaultio, confused about whether these glitches should be patched or not, reportedly contacted Code, who discussed the creativity that these doors could produce. Objects like trucks and trailers, like doors, could also be welded together producing wacky bridges and joints to reach areas otherwise impossible with typical door bridges. In 2019, things such as a triple trailer glitch and an adaptation of its predecessor were invented, allowing users to soar around the map in mere seconds. As of today, players to part welding along with parts of terrain welding has been patched, simply due to its potential for destruction and chaos. During mid-2017, many overpowered glitches were discovered and also patched. The most notable glitch during this era was wood modding, the process of creating planks much larger than the sawmill intended. A similar glitch exists in 2016, where players could catch pine tree leaves and sawmill them, resulting in a massive pine plank. However, this was immediately patched. The new way to perform the glitch involved two sawmills that were glitched inside of each other, somehow allowing entire trees to be fed into the small machine. This design for modding lasted for a while, until it was patched sometime in late 2018. Wall climbing glitches were also discovered around this time, allowing players to traverse up vertical parts. Two-player item climbers were very popular at the time, requiring two players to lift each other up by grabbing an object, usually a sawmill, below them. Single-player wall climbing glitches were discovered in late 2018, involving the player gripping a piece of wood in a way that allows them to climb it like a ladder. In 2019, an even better way was discovered with the player only having to hold an item beneath them. In 2018, people began to discover ways to create grey wood, a type of wood created when a blueprint is filled without wood. This glitch went through many adaptions, ranging from reloading with box blueprints to overflowing a blueprint to over 100%. 
As of today, all of these strategies are patched, with blueprints over 100% being unmovable. After the discovery of Pinkwood in 2016, injection-based exploits began to surface allowing blueprints to be temporarily filled with the pink substance. These painting exploits still exist to this day, however any instances of pink wood get replaced with oak wood on base reload. During March of 2017, the unthinkable happened. An anonymous group of exploiters managed to crack Roblox's code, uncopy locking hundreds of popular games. At this point, updates in Lumber Tycoon were very scarce, and the already abundant group of injection-based exploiters had ruined what was left of the economy. This source league resulted in a magnitude of new injection-based exploits, which was the ability to spawn wood, auto-buy items, automatically duplicate items, and much, much more. Due to the game's entire code being leaked, exploiters quickly discovered how to avoid the anti-cheat and do things otherwise thought impossible. The 2017 source league also opened up another can of worms, that being copies of Lumber Tycoon. These blatant ripoffs of LT2 gained a surprising amount of popularity providing new content and updates that the community desperately wanted in the main game. Some of the borderline insane ideas and concepts seen in these copies also intrigued many popular YouTubers at the time, such as I'm a Flying Midget, who made an entire series on these modded versions of Lumber Tycoon. Default dude did his best to take down these copies, however the ease of making them long with the growing amount of exploits in the vanilla game was simply too much for him to handle. Surprisingly, these ripoffs are still present today, with some getting loads of popularity such as Woodmill Inc., a bland copy of Lumber Tycoon that ripped code directly from the game. The Woodmill Inc. scandal profited the creators hundreds of thousands of Robux, allowing them to dev acts and purchase things in real life. The use of one of these LT2 copies is strictly prohibited, and beware that if you're going to publish one, you risk being DMCA'd or even banned off Roblox. Getting back into 2017, the game itself was experiencing new GUIs that came with a number of exploits that were game breaking. In 2018, many new exploiting GUIs such as Venex and AXLT2 brought concepts otherwise unseen to Lumber Tycoon, including custom base building, player killing, and so on. With each new GUI, a handful of new and creative exploits were brought to the public. With YouTubers such as Joeboy36, now known as JB36, creating videos reviewing and summarizing each new GUI. In late 2018, Default Deal stopped patching these exploiting interfaces, resulting in many GUIs from 2018 still being used today. Popular interfaces such as Blood GUI and Bart could leak items that were part of upcoming events, resulting in removal of leaked items such as the Eerie Skull. These GUIs could also spawn in items on the server side, allowing box at times access to be obtained and saved on reload, something that Default Deal thought was impossible. And thus, injection-based exploits had truly taken over Lumber Tycoon 2. With no solution in sight, the game had little hope left. Today, Lumber Tycoon has way too many injection-based exploits to count, ranging from simple duplication to copying the building style seen in Welcome to Bloxburg. <laughs> the fault still occasionally patches exploits, however workarounds pop up days, even hours later. Lumber Tycoon, as is, cannot recover from the amount of turmoil exploitation has caused. The best course of action would be a rewrite of the game's code, proposed years ago with an LT2.5, a completely new game which would incorporate parts of Test 2's code. This would theoretically bring Lumber Tycoon up to today's standards while also patching all the current exploits in the game. It is unsure if plans for a rewrite are still being considered, we'll just have to wait. However, the future Lumber Tycoon is not all terrible, with new advanced glitches being discovered at an unprecedented rate. Things like welding have been completely revolutionized, with new concepts such as rotational welding, property transferring, and so on. These glitches are unique to Lumber Tycoon, and can produce so much excitement simply by tinkering around with what the game has to offer. Who knows what the future will hold, but I'm sure things will work out one way or another. That's going to be the end of this historical video. I want to give a huge thank you to Transparency, Meta, Unicarns, and Defaultio for answering all my questions I had about this time period. I also want to thank everyone who I used b-roll footage for in this video, and they will all be linked down in the description. And before I part, I want to say that you should not use injection-based exploits in Lumber Tycoon 2. You're just ruining the game even further. Instead, look at the amazing glitches that the game has to offer. Anyways, that's going to be it for me. Goodbye.